slanted vertical tails are a mainstay of modern fighter design. If a jet has two vertical tail surfaces and was designed in the 1980s or later, chances are it's gonna have them attached to the fuselage at an angle. So why is that? What benefits are there to such design choice? Stealth is one explanation, but it's not the only one. Why even have two tails? Because as planes get heavier, they need the larger tail surface to keep them stable in flight and to control their rudder for yaw movement. One could make the tail taller, but at a certain point the structural weight penalties become too much on short planes. Large long planes like commercial airliners have it easier there. And hangar requirements for combat planes also sometimes make tall tails problematic, like in aircraft carriers or hardened bunkers. Another solution would be to move the vertical tail way back. The arm momentum would work in the plane's favor that way. But again, the structure needed to support such a tail, especially on a jet fighter that undergoes heavy loads during maneuvers, might be prohibitively heavy. Also, high pitch angles that combat planes more and more rely on can cause the airflow to be disturbed by the fuselage or wings in an unpredictable fashion, so a single tail doesn't get fed nice uniform undisturbed air. So twin tails started to appear. Early examples had them positioned in the engine slipstream, on multi-propeller planes. Faster air left behind by the engine made the tails more effective. But let's skip to a more interesting time. Enter the SR-71 Blackbird. One of the requirements was to keep it stealthy, less visible to radars. A single tail must be straight, so it keeps the plane straight. But twin tails, each slanted at the same angle but in different directions, cancel out the unwanted forces and still stabilize the plane. Now looked at from the front, the radar doesn't really care if the vertical tails are slanted. Most of the electronic emissions in most tactical situations will be diverted upwards and away from the radar anyway. Let's say the plane is passing a radar by at some distance. At a certain moment, when that large surface of the tail is perpendicular to the radar beam, there will be a massive radar return. Due to the aircraft skin imperfections and the radar beam width, it won't be just a fraction of a second long return, but seconds of increased radar return. Now let's slant those tails inward, like on the Blackbird. The plane flies high up and a radar on the ground has no way of getting its beam to be perpendicular to the tail surface. Even when the plane banks a little bit to turn, the angle is still sufficient to keep the reflected beam away from the radar. Indeed, inward slanted tails were a popular solution for stealth back in the day. The predecessor to the F-117 stealth fighter had them as well. So why did F-117 use a different design, angling them outward? On a large white plane like the Blackbird, the tails were positioned far apart. On the Half Blue, the stealth technology demonstrator aircraft, they were much, much closer, and that interfered with stability and controllability of the plane as the rudders weren't as effective. By slanting them outward, the distance between the rudders could be greater and they could work better. How did that influence the stealth factor? Not much, actually. When the radar observes outward slanted tails from the side, they usually direct the radar energy downwards. The cant angle is carefully chosen, though. Aerial radar in line with a stealth plane at a 15 km altitude will not return the signal, basically ever. But even ground-based radars will not get a return signal until they're very, very close. So close that they would probably see radar returns from other parts of the plane by that point, and not just from the big tails. Even if the plane has to bank to turn, the radar beam of a ground-based radar will not get a return unless the radar is still fairly close. Does that somewhat limit the turns stealth planes can do? To a degree, yes, but stealth features on planes are designed to be used and managed in a specific manner. Pilots are trained not to bank too much when radar threat is high, unless they're in combat, but at that point they're already discovered, so banking a lot isn't such a detriment. Planning out a route of attack is also a big part of stealth. This is so enemy radars can be detected early on, allowing planes to fly at sufficient distances from them. Besides with stealth, the outward angled tails can help with tail performance. Similar to how World War II planes had their tails perform better if positioned in the slipstream of the engines. If the tails are placed at very specific points, in relation to the air vortices that are created by various wing-leading edge lift devices, like those on an F-18 Hornet, the tails can benefit from those accelerated airstreams hitting them. Without canting them, the tails would need much more elaborate and heavier tail fuselage sections, as their roots would be farther away from the center of the mass of the aircraft. 
Finally, one of the very nifty benefits of canted tails is that they can aid in pitch movement. Usually pitching is done by elevators on horizontal tail surfaces. All the whole horizontal tails are movable. Pitching up is very important for planes. It rotates them on takeoff and in air combat it makes them maneuverable. The high angle of attack, which pitch enables, is one of the most important metrics in a plane's maneuverability. Angled tails mean the rudders on those tails are angled as well, so when they both move inward, they divert the air and help pitch the plane up. Or the whole vertical tails can be movable, to act as huge rudders. Such canted vertical tails can work together with horizontal tail surfaces for added pitch momentum. Or on some planes, where the tails are extremely slanted, they can serve as a compromise between vertical and horizontal tails. A famous example would be the YF-23 demonstrator plane. There are some controllability drawbacks to such designs, but if the plane requirements aren't very demanding, maneuverability-wise, two tail surfaces instead of four can lead to a lighter plane, and can also present fewer surfaces to enemy radars to bounce their beams off of them. And there you have it, if you like this short video, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications in order to be informed of our upcoming videos. If you're using a mobile device, you'll get this prompt. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.